Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for another episode of Chief Artisan Thursday. And this time in the studio, once again, we are graced with... Hello, everyone. This is Cicely Wilson, your Pathfinder of Passion International. And what are we going to be talking about today for our listeners? Well, today we are talking all about loving yourself first. That's right. I said it, loving yourself first. And this beautiful month of love, sometimes as we know it as in February, um, you know, love is in the air. So um, who, who better to be the subject of attraction than your beautiful self? So that's what we're talking about today. Awesome. Um, some things I definitely wanted to uh, talk about identity because I feel like a lot of our youth and our young adults are definitely geared towards um, an, a really unrealistic perspective of what their identity should be. Yeah. And, you know, not really given time to discover their giftings, talents and abilities so mm -hmm. why don't you go ahead and lead the discussion uh, this afternoon and I'll chime in this time. So, you know, we, we agree on many points, but I want the audience to pretty much get your perspective of your passion behind being an identity coach for youth and young adults during this month of love yourself first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, everyone, I'm very, very um, excited to be able to speak to this topic because um, I always love to refer to things that I definitely have been on a journey on myself. And I do know for certain that learning to love myself or oneself, as I would say, um, would have to be one of the hardest feats of mankind. So you're in good company if you are listening to this today. And um, I encourage you to please share it um, with as many as possible in order that they can have this awareness as to the importance of loving oneself and, and then actually how to do it. There are many reasons why many of us, um, most humans, I would say, struggle with loving themselves. And there is a quote by um, Dr. Christopher Germer, who's a psychologist, and he's an author of The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion. I do recommend um, that you put that on your book list. But he says that naturally people have a negative bias toward themselves. And so I found that very interesting. Um, I would suggest that the reason for this negative bias is that we are the people that we spend the most time with throughout all of our lives. Like you're with yourself 24 hours a day. Right. And so it gives you a lot of more chances to point out your flaws in it and inadequacies, unfortunately. So it kind of makes sense because, you know, you spend that much time with each, um, with yourself, you get also, um, an, an enormous amount of time to discover, you know, your mistakes, quote unquote. But, one would say, well, why couldn't we have the same capacity to point out all that is great about us as well um, instead, because you have the same opportunity within that time? And that's really the million dollar question. Um, but I would propose that it's connected really to sin nature that all resides on the inside of us that we're born with. And when I speak about like sin nature, um, not to be deep or super spiritual or anything, but what I mean um, when I say that phrase is that it's a nature of judging, it's a nature of striving, and it's a nature of comparison. And that leads me to another big reason why it's hard to love yourself first, because majority of humanity, especially going towards our teens and young adults, we, they spend way too much time comparing themselves amongst themselves. And then there's a reason in the Bible that tells us that this is not wise. And so I say, well, why isn't it wise? Because that's what, uh, because really, when you think about it, what kind of measuring rod would another flawed human being be for another? None. That's what. There's no, there's no kind of measuring rod that another flawed human being should be for yourself. Because when you think about it, the truth can be that the same person that you're admiring is looking right back at you and wanting something that you have. And that's more than likely the case. So it's all relative information. And it's all subjective. So none of it is objective truth. None of it is going to stand the test of time, in other words. And so um, all of it is in the eye of the beholder. We have all heard beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So it really is about, okay, what you're looking at, what you're gazing upon, 
And, you know, I strongly admonish those you to take those same um, gazing eyes and then gaze them right back upon yourself, because it really boils down to this, that one can never discover and unlock the unique and distinctive beauty that dwells in each individual only if we're forever coveting the uniqueness of another and having our focus outward. So I say, look upon yourself. And I say gaze upon yourself because you cannot have someone else's stuff. So just get over it and begin to love all that you are working with. That's what I would admonish everyone yeah, to do. I was like, I was like man, this, that's some great uh, words of wisdom because um, in working with youth and young adults, uh, especially young ladies, um, I've worked a little bit with young men, but more so uh, young women transitioning from high school into college and one of the things I constantly had to uh, remind them was that you were born for a purpose. You know, yes. mom and dad may not have had a purpose, you know, in you being here, but definitely we feel that Father God had a purpose for you being here. So in that understanding, a lot of times you may not hear the uniqueness or the creativity or the, the beauty that you possess, you know, inside of who you were meant to be. But, mm -hmm. you know, just by listening to this conversation, I hope that, you know, something is sparked within each and every individual to seek out, you know, you know, what is it that I was meant to do? You know, it's not just a day to day moping around, you know, mm -hmm. not really thinking through situations and circumstances. You're meant to solve a certain issue. You're meant to yes. solve a, a, a particular situation. So mm -hmm. my thinking is that, it's not only just that the more the merrier it's like when at least two or three are focused on you know yes. organizing the group into a collective effort you know mm -hmm. new designs for new homes can be built new books can be uh written you know new vehicles can be uh uh, invented especially design because my whole thing is um environmental studies you know mm. your your environment is always teaching you pulling you tugging at you to say hey solve me you know you yeah. don't like what you see then the solution when you came into the world is in your dna the solution to figure out what's going on so that we can all have a solution where we can get along you know we mm -hmm. don't have to agree <laughs> Yes. Because there are so many cultures, so many different backgrounds, so many different, um, not just avenues, because I don't, we've been so inundated with, you know, there's one solution and this is the solution. And I'm like, you know what, the more creative you find yourself to be, you know, I was just talking to a designer um, mm -hmm. the other day. And one thing she mentioned was her environment didn't, um, she wanted to become a vegetarian. And, mm -hmm. you know, the majority of the people in her family weren't vegetarians, but she just kept getting that nudge, like, you know what, I, I kind of don't like meat, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, you know, what? I applaud your courage because, you know, because a lot of times in certain cultures, that's all they eat. They don't eat anything else but meat driven uh, menu. So right. but my thought also was, you know, in protecting her health, her family did have a point because as your body changes as a woman, I know I'm going on a rabbit trail, but I'm going to bring it back <laughs> as your body changes as a woman. You do need certain proteins. You do need certain yeah. um, elements of iron. So it's not that you eat it all the time, but maybe certain times you do go and seek you know, non a vegetarian diet, you know, for a week or two weeks, a month, you know, and if that suits your body better, it will tell you. And if it's yeah. missing something, it will always tell you. So, yeah. you know, I know we're diving in deep with a lot of subjects, but definitely, you know, pay attention to the signals that you hear coming from yourself. You mm -hmm. were already wa hardwired to know, you know what, this is not right. This is not right. feel natural to me. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. we as um, older, you know, women and older grown mm -hmm. daughters from my perspective, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like we have a lot to offer younger ladies and men also because I I definitely know that there are gentlemen that do exist that know how to treat a lady, you know, mm -hmm. the way that she should properly be treated. But, you know, all of that to say to find your purpose in loving yourself first, meaning mm -hmm. for maybe one day you think through what do I really want to do today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you know yeah. what it's something simple like what do I want to have for maybe breakfast have a special yeah. breakfast with yourself you know it doesn't yeah. have to be elaborate it doesn't have to be expensive you know what kind of books do I really like to read you know right. what kind of authors really intrigue me you know what right. kind of a uh, flower because I'm very much now a garden person <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. and you know start looking around to see the beauty and the colors that surround your environment if there are none then go find some because yes. there's always a place where you can go uh within chicago at least in the midwest that that there are free places you can walk and you know look in libraries and museums so mm -hmm. that's my yeah so thing. what what um you said a lot in in regard to um this processing and a couple things i wanted to point out um what the last thing that you were referencing um just in really uh, coming into, you know, awareness and, and consciousness of um, where you're at at any point in time and then what's going on. And well, in coaching, you know, we reference that as conscious-based thought and conscious-based choices. And so um, you definitely want to encourage, I would say, especially my teens and young adults to um, cultivate. It, it really is a cultivation and a training um, of oneself to um, be consciously aware and and in your space and, and recognizing what's going on in that place at any moment in time. And, and also um, what I wanted to um, lean towards was as far as the people like orientation, um, what what we were referencing about, you know, not having the comparisons and things of that nature. Let me, let me give you, um, a space or an opportunity for healthy, um, healthy in uh, uh, interaction or engagement, if you will, you were referencing, um, being, um, uh, around people in your sphere that are very similar and like-minded as you, that is a healthy, um, uh, capacity in which you can kind of, um, gauge yourself, not necessarily gauge yourself, but, um, really, um, begin to your own processing as to, okay, what do we have to offer one another? And a lot of times that doesn't occur until you get around the kinds of people and the type of people who are going in the same direction as you are. So it makes sense. Like coaches, I spend a lot of time around coaches, right? Because we have similar energy and we're doing similar things. And even if we're in our respective spheres, we have this coach energy, if you will, that um, helps each other and bears each other up. You and other terms, I'm sure you um, spend a lot of times around um, naturalists and, and those who are into gardening and the environment and things of that nature. I don't spend any time around those type of people outside of you <laughs> because <laughs> that's not my tribe. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I know, I'm, right? not, I'm not and perfect It's not that, that she has to stick around me more either. You know, it's, it's just that she, she knows who her people are and exactly. I know who my people are, but we definitely collaborate, you know, there you go. A, a and lot we, of different we have a specific purpose and coming together in a certain space for, you know, certain reasons. But, but what we both are though, are entrepreneurs, right? And so we, there's another space and there's an entrepreneurial space. And then in our respective spheres, there's still this universal energy that we can collaborate on even as entrepreneurs. So it's, it is, it's all about, um, the purposeful and intentional thought with that. Um, and if I don't know if you want me to go a little bit further. No, about I was, I was going to say, uh, let's take a break right now. We're okay. going to, we're going to come right back, you know, with more information, but let's okay. say they only have time to listen to this portion. Give them your information. Cause I know you've, yes. you've, you've intrigued them to want to know more. And then we're going to go to break. Absolutely. You guys, I am Cicely Wilson. I am the Pathfinder and I would love to um, have a further conversation with you. You can reach me at the number one passion international at gmail.com or you can call me directly at 773-860-8424.